Court Reporter with Stovall and Associates. Welcome to Court Reporter with Stovall and Associates. I'm your host, Micah Glinsky. Tonight we have two guests. Uh, first is Norma Gino Paddock. She is the broker for Realty Executives in Action here in Pahrump. Uh, she also serves for the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors as the vice chair of the MLS committee, which I think you were just uh, recently just recently appointed. All right. Yep. Congratulations, and you're also a faculty member there too. I am. Okay. Yes. Um, we've had you on a couple of times, and typically we kind of do the same thing. We're always just talking about the real estate market. Um, it's important obviously, because it's a very uh, strong indicator as far as how the economy is going. Um, you know, in this market in particular, you, it's kind of one of the, 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 the hardest hit area of the epicenter of foreclosures across Absolutely, the country. Yes, yes. So it, it's nice to, to kind of touch base again and talk about what you've seen going on. Now, tell me, is it a very bright picture? Everything's honky-dory? Oh, yeah. I, it depends on who you listen to. Okay. <laughs> and which crystal ball is being viewed. Okay. However, right now, our market is such that we only have 300 homes on the market right now. That's site-built and manufactured homes together along with condos and townhomes. And so we have the single-family residents manufactured and then as far as condos or, or multifamily. Um, what is typical for this market, say in a healthy market? Well, in a healthy market, we should have about 600. So we're about half? We're about halfway there. In the, in the really uh, beginning of the crash, we had, any time anytime you looked on the market, you had seven, 800 wow. homes on the market. Wow. But we only have about 300 right now because the foreclosures have been stalled. And that's due to Assembly Bill 284. Exactly right. Um, so for our the, viewers, we kind of explain to them, I mean, it's kind of thrown around. I think it's not public knowledge per se as far as everybody knows but I, I know that AB 284 does come a lot uh, come up in a lot of conversations. It, it does and the reason that it does is because the legislators tried to help they they really did try to help the people that were being foreclosed on improperly all that you heard the phrase robo signing mm -hmm. where fraudulent signatures were obtained in order to see that um, a house could be foreclosed on. They had to have proper paperwork. They didn't have it. They forged signatures. And so the legislators took it upon themselves to try to stop that kind of activity. In so doing, they made it so that the foreclosure company had to provide uh, at least an affidavit stating that they have the proper paperwork to foreclose on the home. Mm -hmm. and well, they didn't have it. Hmm. And this is due to fractured interest in property? Yes, okay. uh, yes, because usually you don't have just Bank of America, per se, right. that owns the home. Sometimes they're just servicing the loan, and you have a pool of 10, 20, 30 investors. 100,000. 100,000 of it. it. It's on infinitum at, at some right. points. So you have to get all those investors to agree on any one certain thing, and it just doesn't happen. And it was a major mess. Well, so today we are almost a year, I guess, into the foreclosure faucet being shut off. Yes. In a manner of speaking. Um, this market, we're seeing half of the typical uh, uh, inventory. That doesn't seem too dramatic. It really isn't. And our, the encouraging point that we have right now in front of us is that your traditional sales or your equity sales, people mm -hmm. people selling their homes right. rather than institutions, and that is huge. Okay, so today, um, are we seeing people that are actually purchasing the homes in the prompt market to live in them, or are we seeing speculators come in and buy properties to fill with renters? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we have both. Right now we have, in our office, we see you know, about 50-50. Half of our sales are with investors, half of our sales are with owner-occupants, mm -hmm. which is great. It, it's the investor, however, that has the cash that causes the, the phrase, cash is king. Right. So if you get beat out on, a, on an offer on a home, it's because somebody has come in with cash. Well, and then the other thing that's, that's interesting, and, and we've kind of spoke about this in the past, when you have a cash offer, um, you can kind of name your price. Whereas if you're going to be borrowing against the home, the collateral must match the actual loan being originated. That's correct. And, and it depends on who is actually going to name that price. 
Because sometimes the investment company or servicer will come back at, at a ridiculous counteroffer to a legitimate cash offer wanting more money. All right, so you're seeing that when they're doing these appraisals, yes. for lack of a better word, appraisals of these homes um, in this area, that in fact they're uh, appraising them at a much higher level than the market can actually bear? No, the appraisals aren't coming back that high. The investors just want more money. Oh, okay. And a cash investor is not going to get an appraisal. Right, right. And so therefore they're naming their own price that way or, or attempting to. So, so effectively you're saying that if, if it's not an equity sale, meaning yes. if somebody is underwater, yes. you're seeing this market being stalled out right now by the investors themselves. L let me, let me, the original investors, those who hold the note on the, on the home. Right. They, they have stalled. And, and they have stalled, you know, I mean, we've talked about this too. It could be a political football at this point. Yeah, that's an interesting point. And that actually kind of leads to um, the, uh, the uh, uh, Bush tax breaks uh, for people that are selling homes uh, that are underwater. Right, right. The, the, that debt relief act that right. is going to happen, is, it's going to sunset in December unless something happens. Now, we're, we're um, as realtors, we are going after our legislators, and the legislators are saying that, yes, they're for that. However, the IRS is saying, no, you're not. They're the ones that are doing the pushback. So there. essentially, in a nutshell, if I understand it correctly, the, the tax shelter is that if somebody is to sell a home and be short on the note, yes. the remaining amount, if in fact it is written off by the lender, uh, a 1099 traditionally would be issued to that person and taxed as income. Right. But the Death Relief Act alleviates or, um, I should say, uh, negates the ne tax liability. Absolutely. Um, that would typically be associated with that. Right. So if you have a $100,000 home, mm -hmm. you sell it for 50000 you sell it short, you're going to get a 1099 for $50,000 that they, the bank did not collect. Right. And you're ha going to pay income tax on that on, as regular income. So typically, well, let's let's take our first commercial break. We'll get back through that and kind of explain um, the Debt Relief Act, and then um, we'll kind of do a recapping conversation. So sure. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Court Reporter with Stovall and Associates. Court Reporter with Stovall and Associates. Welcome back to Court Reporter with Stovall and Associates. Uh, our guest right now is Norma Gino Paddock, a uh, broker of Realty Executives in Action. And we'll, before we went to break, we were talking about the Mortgage Debt Relief Act. Yes. Um, anyway, so what we were getting to is uh, the tax benefit that's currently in place mm -hmm. that sunsets uh, at the end of the year, so December 31st. Um, so today, being that we're going to assume that uh, this administration isn't going to extend, or let's say a future administration is going to extend that, that relief. Um, what do you do as a homeowner who's underwater right now? Well, you work quickly and you get a hold of an agent that can do a short sale. Okay. Preferably an experienced, experienced agent that can do a short sale because you're going to have now a very small window in which to get that sale done so that you can uh, enjoy the the uh, Debt Relief Act that's in place. So if, if somebody was to contact an agent in state, um, you know, I'm underwater in my house and I don't know what to do, an agent will be able to guide them through the process as far as find a buyer, yes. sell the home, and what you're hoping to do is to close before the end of the year? Exactly right. And exactly then they'll be right. able to enjoy, let's say, at $50,000, a 1099, you know, of course, we're just speculating here. Let's call it five thousand dollars in tax liability. Right, right. Okay. And usually, it's more than that. It, of course, no. of course. Um, so, do you see this being commonplace in this market? Are people really uh, who who are underwater? Are they waiting until the last minute to do these things? No, not necessarily. Not uh, the the best scenario is to get a hold of an agent just before you stop making that payment. Oh, before you go into before default. Before you go into default. If you can catch them then, then the agent has time to work with it. However, in order to, 
in order to uh, have this debt relief act, you have to get it closed before the end of the year. Now, the important thing with a short sale is you've got to be there for the paperwork. Oh, absolutely. It, it is, you know, and it won't be, you won't be asked for that particular piece of paper once or twice or three times or 12 times. You'll be asked for it as often as the, the lender insists on it. So is it realistic, of course we're speculating, but is it realistic that somebody could complete a short sale if they started today by the end of the year? Bank of America is touting that they will give you an answer in 30 days. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, that's been pretty informative. How do people get a hold of you if they have any more questions? They can call Realty Executives in Action at 727-5858. Okay. Anything else you want to add before we, we go to our second break? No, I've always enjoyed my time. <laughs> well, we'll definitely have you back on. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Court Reporter with Stovall & Associates.